top flight, where I'm documenting the build of my RANS S21 outbound plane. Uh, first, a disclaimer, uh, none of my videos are instructional videos. I'm just documenting what I did to build my plane, and it may have interest to others. In this video, I cover attaching the cage to the tail cone assembly, uh, installing the magnetometer, and preparing some of the skins with stringers, etc. I did have a little trouble following the manual step by step. Uh, the manual doesn't do a real good job talking about avionics, harnesses, antenna mounts, etc. And I had a fear of closing things up uh, prior to having that done. And for the most part, there's no rush on closing up the tops, and it worked out okay. Uh, I did have a Longeron error mistake, which I cover in the uh, video. And I'll just preface it with the cost to send a 10-foot piece of aluminum from Kansas to California uh, is north of $300. Um, at the start of this video, I'm at 453 hours. That's a pretty accurate assessment. It doesn't include, does not include uh, my time on the computer, watching other videos, researching certain topics. That's pretty much build time in the garage. And I will update where I am after this section at the end of the video and give you a summary. With that, thanks for watching, and let's get to the build. Uh, change in plans. Uh, I'm going to hold off putting the stringers on the top skins. I've watched several videos, and most of the other builders are attaching the top skins and the stringers after the cage assembly is attached to the tail cone. So on to the cage assembly attachment. Uh, the first step is to prime the forward section of the tail cone where it comes in contact with the cage. There's a dissimilar metal issue, even though the cage is powder coated, to ensure uh, no contact between the dissimilar, dissimilar metals. They recommend priming. I went a little further. I think you only need to prime the first three or four inches if I look at the way it mates. Uh, there's a lot of discussion about priming technique. Clearly, you don't just spray the primer on. Uh, there's some cleaning. There's some scratching or sanding, uh, buffing. Um, there's a lot of different methods. I'm not a painting expert, so I'll let you research your own. I did use a, a, a zinc phosphate primer. Uh, that's the primer I found that adheres very well to aluminum. I'm not recommending it. I'm just saying that's what I did. The research on it shows that it was pretty good. Although there's an awful lot of different methods that people are using for priming. So just my two cents. Next thing is get this cage up on the table and start the attachment. The first step in attaching the cage to the tail cone is to get it up on the table. Uh, I've got it up on the table and they say to roughly shim the cage so that it comes in contact in the right place with the tail cone. So I've got a two by two in the front, a four by four somewhere in the cage. Uh, then they have you slide the cage into, or slide the tail cone, so that the bottom skins are touching the cage and that it is pushed in. The next step I'm certain is going to be to start angling it, as you can see here. The shimming is just rough and it's not lined up, but we've got it in, we've got it pushed in, and we'll go to the next step. The, uh, the next step is to get things level, and there's a lot of shimming going on. I had a whole package of these plastic shims, which helped a lot. Uh, and af what you're shimming for, what I understand, is we want to be level here, across, uh, and then back here to make sure that you're level going both ways from the tail cone. Then I also came up here and I made sure that the cage was leveled this direction. And my understanding now is we're going to do an angle between here and here. I think it's 89. I'm going to have to look in a second. But up to this point, I've shimmed to get everything squared as best I can with, uh, and everything is zero, zero, so I'm, I'm level all the way around. And then it says to clamp to the longerons, which was kind of difficult, but I used a little piece of wood, and I said, leave enough room to drill a hole. So I've got a piece of wood in there uh, with a clamp on it with enough room to drill a hole. 
Same thing on that side, creative clamping. I put some clamps up here. They're not real tight clamps, but they're holding it to the tab up here. And we'll move forward from here. Uh, the next measurement was measured for square. I took a piece of aluminum stock that I had and made sure that the distance it was perfectly centered and the distance is exactly the same on either end. Then I took a measurement from the tip all the way back to a station. I don't have it pulled a little tight. I just left it here for demonstration, but I took it to this exact point here. And then I did the same thing on the other side and measured it and made sure that it was exactly the same distance. Then I also took the string off the stock and did a second measurement from the front of the um, engine mount, ran it along and then also came back to station 10 to each side and made sure it was consistent on that. And both times it came out exactly the same. So I'm, I'm good with the square measurement. Um, I saw someone else do this um, and it seemed to make sense um, uh, measuring wise. Well, part of documenting a build and doing this for other builders is uh, finding mistakes. When it tells you to trim this upper longeron, 4.2 inches or 4.25 inches from the center of the hole. They mean 4.2 inches long wise, not shorter than the hole. I've trimmed that longeron wrong. That's supposed to go all the way to the cage. I'm gonna have to order a couple longerons. I've got a buddy who lives nearby. He's a little behind me on the build. Maybe I can use his while these are on order. But uh, that was a bad mistake on my part. To correct my error with cutting the longerons too short, I did get two replacement longerons uh, thanks to my buddy Rich. I've ordered new ones from Rands, but Rich let me borrow his until mine come in and I'll replace his. But what I did is I opened my garage, moved the cage, disassembled the cage from the tail cone and slid the longerons out because they were only Clecoed. You, know, you can see that they slide back and forth in and out of the cage. So I slid the other, unclecoed, declecoed, slid the new ones in, reprimed it, and I'll let that dry, and then we'll get back to the process where we left off. Okay, I've got everything squared and measured and leveled uh, per the steps up to now. I've got the new longerons in, clamped, clamped on the top and the bottom. The next step is to measure the angle between this top longeron and the uh, front cage bar, uh, firewall cage bar, and they want that to be 88.9 degrees, plus or minus 0.2. Uh, so I've got, oh, I just went off, but I had 3.3 degrees here. I had 85.7 degrees here. So I'm at 89 degrees, so I'm 0.1 off the, the 88.9. So I'm within the tolerance that they want. The next step was to match drill the gussets through the longerons and the skins. Uh, you've got six holes to drill for each gusset on both sides. Uh, they say remove the clamps as you go, and once you have all the clecos in, uh, you can actually rotate the cage. There's enough strength in that to rotate the cage, but they say to be careful adding extra weight. The next step is to put these support angles in. They give you, a, I think, a 10-foot section of stock that you cut. You're cutting a 19 inch section off. Uh, this will go on what they call the middle longeron, uh, which is attached to your cage and part of your tail cone. Uh, I drew a line down the middle of my 19 inch piece of stock. I'm setting it to the end. Uh, I'm gonna start with a hole, a number 11 hole. Make sure I'm comfortable with that and click on that, drill it all the way down, and then match drill to a 30. It does install underneath, but for the drilling, I'm gonna match drill it up top uh, to make sure I've got a nice center hole drill. I have uh, finished putting this support in. You can see it's, the support is actually underneath the longeron. It's drilled out to a number 30 and click code in. Okay, there is some discussion on the bottom doubler. If you look at the diagram, they show the doubler sandwiching the uh, tail, uh, the cage gusset in between the longeron, and this is the doubler on the outside. 
uh, and you look at some of the videos and you look at Eddie Gill's video on the Rand's website, in some cases, they've got the doubler inside the gusset. And he basically says, I'm going to come around and show you what I'm talking about here. He basically says, because of where this gusset is welded to the frame, sometimes it'll work better. The doubler will work better on the outside, sandwiching it. And other times it goes inside. Um, and some builders have put it inside. But in both cases, he does say he brings the doubler all the way back. There was some discussion whether it was on four holes or five holes or back behind the gusset. Eddie said that they always bring the, the doubler up uh, to the full six holes. It's just a matter of whether it's going to go inside or outside the cage gusset. Uh, so I'm going to fit it both ways and see which way it works. You do have this S3, S4 connector piece that slides underneath. I'm leaving that out of the discussion because that's just kind of an extra obvious step that goes in there. Um, but I did the research and I'm going to see which way it fits up the best. I did get the side match drilled into that doubler. Uh, I ended up using the sandwich method where the uh, doubler and the Longeron sandwich, the cage gusset, um, that fit. When if I tried putting the doubler uh, on the outside of the gusset, it pushed my skin too far away from the cage tube. A couple quick reminders. This uh, doubler is coming in contact with the gusset, the stainless steel cage, so that's also need, needs to be primed. Uh, anything coming in contact with the cage should be primed. The other thing is uh, a good source of information uh, is the RANS Builders Forum. Uh, the nice feature on there, there is a search function. So if you just type in, in this case, I typed in uh, bottom longer on. That's all I had to type in. And there were several discussions on this that had already taken place. So rather than having to ask the group again, uh, there was a good discussion that took place back in uh, early 21, I think, 2021, that covered this topic exactly. The other question I had, it didn't really address, is where does this uh, S3, S4 support uh, line up? Um, I saw others that left this uh, tab just touch coming up to the cage that left one rivet hole here and then the back end rivets on to that um, closeout or to that um, bulkhead. Um, so this is the way I've seen others do it, so I'm going to do this as well. And now remember, this comes in contact with the cage, so this is going to have to get primed also. I finished installing the upper and lower support angles. Uh, they're attached. They're not cleaned up, deburred, and primed yet because I'm going to do other attachments uh, before taking apart and cleaning everything. The next step are these tab spacers. They give you four of them and they need to be cut. The first step in this is just to mark them off and cut them to length. These go, I believe, between the, tab, whoops, between the tabs and the skin and uh, take up the gap there and act actually add a little more support. This step is pretty straightforward. You cut these to length. I started with a hacksaw, but then found a good pair of tin snips uh, was a lot faster. Uh, there's six cuts. You've got two lower sides, two upper sides, a top and a bottom. Uh, they just go in uh, to these tabs. There's a little bit of adjustment. Some are a little bit after the tab, some of them are right on the tab, but it's just straightforward attached, transfer drill, and then these have to get primed also. I am now taking everything apart uh, and priming all the pieces and parts that will come in contact with the cage and cleaning and deburring and we'll put it all back together again. I have got the tail cone and cage cleaned up, deburred, primed, and Clecoed at this point. Uh, this is that S3, S4 baggage support that it gets sandwiched in between the angle support and the longeron, the bottom longeron. I also have the spacers Clecoed in. I've got to match drill some of the stringers into the spacers. Uh, but this is pretty much all set and ready for riveting. Uh, the next step is I'm going to install my magnetometer. It is an option that RANS offers. It's a Garmin magnetometer. And they don't give you any text that I could find. 
but they have the parts and the diagram page before you put the top skins on, which makes sense because you got to get in there. And it's a pretty simple diagram. It's just going to rivet to your bottom skin from the bottom up with some different size rivets and then some nut plates. And then it's going to screw down. The only comment I would say is there's four stainless steel screws that go into the nut plate. If you're supply, supplying the nut plates, it should be nice if Rand supplied the stainless steel screws. It means another trip to Home Depot if I don't have them in the garage and I probably don't have the exact size that's required. After, I don't know, what was the, the kit? I think it was $65 or $70. Um, and, oops, I forgot the plate itself. I had it sitting in the plane. That's the plate. Um, you would think they'd include the, the stainless steel screws. Sure would help and save a trip. But that's neither here nor there. It doesn't look like a complicated install. We'll get that installed. Well, I thought I was going to get lucky. I had some leftover stainless steel screws from the pedo mount. Uh, whenever I buy screws, I always buy more than I need and put them in my backup, my stainless steel box of miscellaneous screws. So these are uh, number sixes by 32 thread by quarter inch. But the quarter inch just isn't quite long enough to get through the base of the magnetometer and then the two levels of the aluminum and then the nut plate. So I need just a little bit longer, maybe a 3 8 uh, So I'll have to get screws after all. Uh, the first thing I did is I click out on these uh, nut plates from the bottom so that my rivet gun would get on the top. Started riveting. I put one rivet in each so far. The, uh, these are fairly flush mounted. But the way these nut plates sit is the magnetometer is going to clear the uh, rivets so they don't even have to be flush. So no counter sinking or dimpling or anything like that. Uh, so I'll finish riveting the nut plates and then we'll start putting it in the, the fuselage. Uh, the magnetometer gets installed between the 8th and the 7th bulkhead. I drilled and clecoed the front of it first so I got it flush up against the bulkhead. Now I'll put this skin drill holes in and just rivet it in place. I did move it over just a little. They don't tell you exactly where, but I wanted to make sure that when this is mounted, there's enough room for this plug to clear the edge of this bulkhead. So I moved it over just a little um, and it should work. The text page goes on to the next section, but the header says after Longeron supports tail cone top skins, fuselage side and bottom skins are fit up. Well, I haven't done the top skins yet. I was holding off on that uh, until rudder cables, avionic uh, wire runs, etc., were done because I didn't want to close up my top. But I've watched some other videos of other builders and people tend to jump around. I do want to do the rudder cable install, but that clearly comes after this section. And it does say I've got to get my top skins on. So I'm going to circle back around and work on my top skins. Uh, it's a little bit confusing. There's some uh, stringers that come out longer than the skin and some that get cut off. So I'm going to work on the, the um, stringers for the top. Uh, the instructions for the top skin stringers are back on page 80 and you've got to do some interpreting of the couple different diagrams you get uh, to figure out exactly where the stringers go. Making sure the flanges are the right way because they have to fit in these, these grooves. Um, I've placed the first stringer in. This is the side stringer to the top skin. And they don't say to cut. If I cut 0.25, a quarter of an inch, I'm just inside the skin. And that seems to make sense to where I'm going to go. So I'm going to cut this one off. It doesn't say anything about cutting the tail. This is the last hole, and there's this little tail on the stringer. So I'm not going to cut that right now. And before I rivet it, I'll make sure it fits. Okay. I'm going to discuss for a few seconds something that's just taken me hours to get through and maybe I can avoid a future build of the issue. It's these uh, top skin stringers and top skin assembly. Uh, let me kind of point out a couple things. First, you're going to notice that on this bulkhead, it's bulkhead number four, there are five cutouts here for the stringers. In all the other videos that I've watched, there's only three cutouts. 
and apparently Rands change the design fairly frequently. I haven't seen any other video, including the Rands video, that's got the five cutouts. Someone mentioned that this, uh, this short stringer, which is one over there, they had it come through the bulkhead rather than in before in a recent modification. So that confused me a little bit. Uh, so after I got through that, let me go to where the hang up was. In my installation instructions, number 13 says to refigure to refer to figure 0702A and cut the shorter forward stringer for the top skin. Okay, and you come over to 72A, I'm sorry about the shadow, and there's this short one that extends out over the top skin to the cage. After that, there's no more discussion about putting the top skin together until you come to step 25 and it says after the laundron supports tail cone top skins etc are fit up well you don't have any instructions up to this point and one of the tops one of the stringers the center stringer which is only one at one point i thought they were two but if you go to if you go to this diagram you can see that the way these mate right here they just use one stringer down the middle where the two skins will overlap and use. I thought I was a stringer short. I thought there should be two stringers down here, but it's just one. So that's another confusion that I figured out. But these holes on the top skin are, are drilled out to a number 40, not a number 30. So they're small holes. And all the builders are saying you've got to match drill that after it's up top. So you do final alignment. I and mean, the whole concept of match drilling is to make sure things are tight. So to drill them out on the table uh, wouldn't make sense. You got to drill them out up here, but you wouldn't do that until after you have kind of finished your top skins. But then we come back to this and it says, don't move on here until your top skins are fitted up. So what I've decided to do is to put all my stringers in and Clico them. I've got them clico from underneath just because it was easier to do it on the table. I'm going to put all my stringers in except for that center stringer that needs to get drilled out and match drilled and I'm not going to rivet anything so I'll get the top skins all clecoed and ready to go except for that center stringer and the drill out and I'm going to assume that's what they mean by tail cone top skins uh, fitted up and I'll keep moving ahead I obviously can't rivet everything down because I've still got a lot of work in this cone section for for flooring and cables and guides. So I'm just going to get the top skins kind of set, put them aside, and then get back to work uh, on my, my uh, rudder cables and, and antenna wires and antenna installs, etc. Okay, here's my uh, next area of confusion. Boy, these stringers and top skins have, have, I've spent far too much time trying to analyze this. Got to keep moving. In this little box right here, they say, leave the stringer. This is that short stringer they're talking about right here. It says, leave the stringer long and drill through the skin and bulkhead tab into the stringer to uh, clear the bulkhead. Here's the stringer right here. And what they do is they say, do not drill out the hole that's in the stringer, but in the skin, you're going to drill through the match drill from the skin hole through the stringer. Okay. That plan did not work. Uh, when I placed the stringer between the flange and the skin, it obviously bulged the skin. So what I think they're asking you to do is to cut off the stringer before the bulkhead uh, and then rivet that last where you've match drilled, rivet that last one in. I've got the tail cone top skin fitted, is what I understand fitting to mean. The, the stringers are all clecoed on the inside and the skin is clecoed to the outside. There's still the transfer drill down the center, which I have not done. I'm still going to finish up some riveting first. And then you come down and that, in theory, satisfies my fit up the top skin. So the next step goes on to rivet the tail cone to the cage at the longerons the window support, and the attach tabs. I'm going to take a cautious approach. I'm going to rivet the bottom of the stainless steel rivets because I can't see anything more being attached there. This is clearly a longeron up here, 
but I'm going to hold off. It says at the window support, but I've got to believe that these rivets are going to double for the skin coming down for the window support. I might be wrong, but I'm going to hold off riveting these along here just for the reason that, uh, and along this, this um, bulkhead, because I think the window support uses those rivet holes, but no harm if I hold off a little and leave those Clecos in. So we'll get the stringers riveted in and the bottom part of the lingeron, bottom and inside. I've got the, uh, uh, the support plate in, so that'll get riveted. And then we'll see what comes next. I've finished riveting what I'm going to do right now. I've riveted the, uh, the bottoms. And there's a whole bunch of different rivets, so be careful. These are these great big stainless steel rivets. I did uh, wet dip them in primer because they're going into the aluminum. Um, I also didn't rivet the stringers along the top because uh, I believe they are taken off and they are bent right here at the station four and they're bent to match up uh, with the cage. So I've seen other videos where they actually have them off the skins to bend them. Again, the, the manual's not clear on it, so I'm gonna hold off and I can always rivet later. So with the next step, we're moving on to the uh, rudder cable system. There's a couple parts diagrams and it looks like we're just gonna be putting pieces and parts together and running them through the tail cone. Okay, it's probably a, a good place to end this video. Uh, I'm already a little bit past the time frame that I like to have uh, for each of my videos. Uh, this section took me 37 hours to build. Uh, that brings my build time to 490 hours. Um, I've already got content to put out another one, which I'll try to get together shortly. In the next video, we'll get into ELT, antenna mounts, cables, uh, floorboards, closeout, uh, maybe landing gear. I don't know if that'll, that might be too much. Again, trying to keep my videos at half an hour or less. Um, but lots to do, having lots of fun. Uh, everything's working out. I appreciate you watching, and just remember, dream it, just build it.